Hey, Mr. Heinrich here, and you're about to watch one of my AP Physics 1 progress checks. This one is Unit 1, Problem 1. It's on projectile motion. Check it out. So it starts from height H and goes to distance D. So what is it they're asking for? The dart lands on the target at time T. On the following axis, sketch a graph of the vertical velocity and the horizontal velocity of the dart as a function of time T. So I already have these drawn out right here on my paper and we need to think about what's happening with the system so here's our dart and as it's launched off like i said previously it's completely initially in the x-axis and then let's go ahead and talk about the x-axis if you've been paying attention this year i hope that you've found out that in the x-axis the velocity doesn't change at all. It stays the same exact amount all the way throughout. And this is simply because there's no acceleration in the x-axis. All the acceleration is in the y-axis. So it will start to speed up in the y, but in the x, there's no unbalanced force to make it go faster or slower. You might say, well, air resistance, but again, these are idealized situations. We're not looking at things like air resistance unless they ask us for that. So all of these are right facing velocities or rightward velocities. So therefore they would be in the positive region of this graph, right? That would be the negative and this would be the positive. And since it never changes, it's a consistent velocity all the way to time T. All right. Okay. So let's look over at the Y axis now. So as this dart travels off, it does start to gain more and more y velocity it's accelerating in the y-axis just like that and why is that well because every second that passes our speed increases meters per second each second that is what acceleration is all about acceleration is meters per second squared but it's very helpful to remember that actually means that for every second that passes or unit of time that passes, our speed increases. Okay, so how would that look on a graph like this? Well, at the beginning, there's absolutely no y velocity. I could say v initial y, that was a v initial x, v initial y is zero meters per second. So I'd start at the origin, just like that. And then in the next moment of time, right there or it could be even here if you want to think about equal units of time it speeds up a certain amount so after some unit of time it speeds up like that and then in the next unit of time it speeds up a little bit more in a negative fashion right it got to have a bigger magnitude negative velocity and then in the next unit of time so on and so forth and you can see actually what we're producing here is a sloped line a constant slope that is negative, okay? All right, part two says start with a kinematic relationship, derive an expression for the launch velocity VL needed for the dart to hit the center of the target. And we wanna express our answers in terms of H and D. So what I'm writing on the sheet right now is that I've been given H, I've been given D, and then we can also put G because G is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. It's a fundamental constant, and they call it a physical constant here. But what do they want us to find? They want us to find VL. All right, so going back over to our paper, the way I write that out is just like that. Oh, and by the way, we're calling this A1, right? Okay. So... 90, I don't know, 95% of the time, your starting point should always be this kinematic equation. Delta X equals V naught X T plus one half A X T squared. And Delta Y equals V naught Y T plus one half A Y T squared. Just like that. Now we get to do some things to simplify these equations. In my class, I call these the second kinematic equation. So I'm going to realize once again, at the beginning, at time equals zero seconds right here, 
we have absolutely no y velocity. So I'm going to cross this out to zero, and zero times t would be zero, so this whole thing goes away. On this one, I get to cross something out also. Notice at the very beginning, we started off by talking about this graph, saying that there was no acceleration in the x-axis whatsoever. So I get to call ax zero, and this whole term crosses out, because zero times all the stuff is zero. I get to write a simplified expression, delta x equals v naught xt, and here, delta y equals one half a y t squared. Now, I'm not being very particular to these terms yet, but I'm getting there, okay? What does delta mean again? Delta means a change in, so we're changing our position, our x position. So I'm going to rewrite it as x minus x initial equals v naught x t. And one more iteration here. I'm going to realize that my final position x is actually d, right? So if you look back at the paper right here, our initial position would be 0, right? But our final position is known as D. So moving back over to here, I'd say, hey, initially I have 0x, but at the end I have a distance we're calling D, and v naught x is expressed right here. But v naught x is my launch velocity VL. Now that graph's kind of in the way, but v naught x is VL. So I'd come down here and I'd say, well, instead of v naught x, I'm going to call it VL times T. Now, I can't express my answer in terms of t, so I'm not done yet. I can't just solve this for VL and then say I'm done. So I need to turn my attention now to the y equation. So let's personalize this guy for these terms. Well, I'm going to say y minus y naught equals 1 half. Ay is actually g. Now, if you were solving this and actually coming up with a a numeric answer, I would say to just leave it as a y, and at the end you'd plug in a negative 9.8, right? So is it fair to say that g is actually a negative value when we plug it in? It is. So I'm going to put in here negative g times t squared. Okay. Again, if you were doing this in class and it was just some example problem, I would leave it as a y to the end and put in negative 9.8. But we're front loading right now this g with that negative, and you're going to find out why uh, right now. So, what is my initial height? My initial height is actually h, right? So, I'm going to say, well, this is h, and what's my final height? y. Well, that would be zero. You find that when you're over here, the dart hits the ground, right? Hits the target. And it looks like we're at a height of zero. So my final y is zero, and this would equal one half negative g t squared. So if I rewrite this again, I'd say negative h equals one half. I put the negative in front, g t squared. And you can see those negatives just cancel out. We divide both sides by negative one, if you will. And let's get an expression for t. Why are we finding t? Because I can't find VL from this until I find t in terms of the things that are given, right? So that's what we're doing right here. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. I'm going to divide by g, and I'm taking the square root of both sides. So that's how you isolate t there. Multiply by 2, divide by g, square root. Okay, done. Now I'm going to plug this sucker in. I'm going to say d equals vl times the square root of 2h over g. Almost. We're almost there. So finally, let's solve this thing for vl because that's what they asked for. vl is equal to simply d over 2h over g, the square root of that stuff. You could also say VL is equal to D times the square root of G over 2H. Kind of multiply top and bottom by the root of G, and then you absorb all the stuff back into a square root, if you will.
So the next thing says B. The height of the platform is then increased, but the target is not moved. Indicate whether the launch velocity should be increased, decreased, or should remain constant for the dart to still hit the center of the target. Justify your claim. Okay. So you can use just a verbal reasoning here, kind of a conceptual reasoning, and they'll be fine with it. You could say, if I increase the height, it's going to fly for more time, right? And if it's going to fly for more time, if it was at the same exact velocity, it would go further because it would have more time to fly. So you would say, since the height is bigger, then and flight time is going to increase as a result, the velocity, the launch velocity must reduce in order for the dart to go the same distance D. So simply put, height is increased, flight time would also increase, decrease the launch velocity to compensate so that it still goes the same distance D and hits the target. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more progress checks. I'm gonna do all the progress checks for AP Physics 1 this year. I'm gonna get you ready for that test. You're gonna get a five if you put in the hard work. Stick with me, I've got you covered. Bye.